It's often imagined that atheists are in principle closed to spiritual experience. But the truth is, there's nothing that prevents an atheist from experiencing self-transcending love or ecstasy or rapture or awe. In fact, there's nothing that prevents an atheist from going into a cave for a decade and, and practicing meditation like a proper mystic. What atheists don't tend to do is make unjustified and unjustifiable claims about the cosmos on the basis of those experiences. Now, there's no question that disciplines like meditation and prayer can have a profound effect upon the human mind. I think there's, there's a place for the sacred in our lives, and I think there's a, a usefulness to seeking profundity as a matter of our attention. Sure. And I, mean, I still use words like spiritual and mystical. People have self-transcending experiences, and people have the best day of their life where everything seems, you know, they seem at one with nature. Sure. Clearly, people have extraordinary experiences. It's possible to feel that you're one with the universe and to lose your sense of boundary with the universe. It's possible to have uh, really wonderful oceanic experiences of consciousness, experiences that seem like just pure consciousness, where sense data fall away and it just seems like you are consciousness prior to anything else showing up in terms of the character of your experience. I think we have to make a really clear distinction between describing the character of one's experience and making claims about the way the cosmos is. You have to be very slow to extrapolate from what you experience in the, in the darkness of your closed eyes to what is true of the nature of the universe. Do the positive experiences of, say, Christian mystics over the ages suggest that Jesus is the sole savior of humanity? Not even remotely. Because Christians have been having these experiences, but so have Buddhists and Muslims and even atheists. So there's a deeper reality here and it makes a mockery of religious denominations. The fact is that whenever human beings make an honest effort to get at the truth, they reliably transcend the accidents of their birth and upbringing. Just as it, it would be absurd to speak about Christian physics, though the Christians invented physics. And it would be absurd to speak about Muslim algebra, though the Muslims invented algebra. It will one day be absurd to speak about Christian or Muslim ethics or spirituality. If spiritual means, I love my kids, I've experienced a beautiful sunset, at the beauty of nature. You know, when Einstein says that it's a miracle that the laws of nature are rationally intelligible and they're mathematically beautiful, this whole picture of, of awe and wonder that scientists can attest to, if that's spirituality, well then I'm spiritual too and there's really nothing left out. There is something left out. That is not what a mystic, a real mystic or, or contemplative experiences after his 10th year in the cave doing nothing but meditate. And that is not the, the highest possibility of human consciousness being attested to by all of the religiously confused people over the ages who have talked about being one with the universe. There's a spectrum of, of experience that we have to acknowledge that many, many millions of people have experienced experience, for instance, like self-transcending love. Experiencing love of a sort that makes no sense unless you have experienced it. So literally knowing that you could love a stranger, someone you have actually no relationship with. So my argument is that we have to avoid pseudoscience and we have to avoid pseudo-spirituality. We have to just become interested in the full spectrum of human experience 
and, and talk about it rationally. Well, I do agree with you. I could not possibly agree with you more.